And let us all turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 14, verses 43 to 50. Mark chapter 14, verses 43 to 50. Okay, it reads, as he, was speaking, as he was speaking, Judah, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him, and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The man seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of, the, one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And everyone deserted him and fled. Uh, the title of today's message is, But Scripture Must Be Fulfilled. And, uh, I think uh, underlying theme of the uh, book of Matthew and book of Mark that we have studied is this, that the Scripture must be fulfilled. Whatever happens, Scripture is going to be fulfilled. So if this is true, the most important thing that you and I need to understand and grab onto is the scripture, is the word of God. Uh, Jesus, knowing the imminent future, what did he do? You know, we talked about during first service. Uh, three times uh, he was talking to the disciples, right? Uh, if you look at verses 35 to 36, uh, Jesus says, it says, Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the, that, it, that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. So Jesus wanted a disciple to understand this. So he said this three times for about an hour, <laughs> over and over again. And I'm sure he was... Uh, he will cover the, uh, the scripture references, you know, all the prophecies that, that had been prophesied concerning him. For an hour, he, he prayed this same prayer. And he comes back and he discovered the disciples falling asleep. You know, um, he warned them. He went back to, uh, to pray, came back, they're falling asleep, they're, they're sleeping again. Three times he prayed the, three, the, the same prayer. And Jesus warned them, saying, stay, stay. If you look at verse 34, Jesus says, stay here and keep watch. Yeah. And going a little farther, Jesus prayed. And, you know, he came back from, from praying, and, and he found out that disciples, disciples were falling asleep. They were sleeping. That's why, that's when Jesus says, Jesus called out Simon and says, are you asleep? Are you asleep? Are you sleeping now? And he said, could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Jesus knew what was going to happen. Jesus knew that disciples, disciples were going to, to, to betray him. He knew that they're all going to run away. So he wanted to make sure, like, like what I said last week, Jesus wanted to make sure that the disciples understood that all these things are taking place according to the scripture. So many things are going to happen, but the scripture must be fulfilled. This was the key. So encouraging disciples to, to stay awake and pray. But did they pray? No. They were not able to. Well, we can talk about their, their physicalities. You know. We can talk about they're their weak in, in, in their physical body. Then we can talk about many different things. They were tired. You know, you know, they, they, they were not able to, um, to, to pray. We can talk about so many different reasons, but the main reason here is that they did not understand who Jesus was. 
because they did not understand who Jesus Christ was correctly, whatever the thing that they were doing were affected by that. All the decisions that they make, whether to stay awake, whether to fall asleep, whether to do this or not do this, everything affected them because they did not understand Jesus, who Jesus was. Had they known who Jesus Christ was, they would have stayed stay awake, right? But they were not able to. Uh, so he wanted to, he wanted his disciple to stay awake and pray, you know, and hoping that if they hear what Jesus was saying at the same time, disciples praying, that Jesus thought that they might understand that all these things are taking place according to God's will. According to the God's will that Jesus Christ had to die, you know, he wanted his disciples to understand that, but by no means, they were not able to. Why? Because their understanding of Jesus was what? Political Messiah. Oh, he's the political Christ. He's not here to save our souls, but he, he's here to save us from the hands of Romans. And because of that perspective, incorrect perspective, they were not able to understand what Jesus was saying. They were not able to simply follow whatever the thing that Jesus was telling them. They couldn't. They couldn't. For 50 years of my Christian life, and I've seen so many people, and ever since I started preaching, and I've seen so many people, people hear the message. Some people listen and some people don't. Some people understand and some people don't. You know, Even if they understand the scripture, understand well, what it is that God is, trying to, God is trying to telling them, still some of them are able to do it and some of them are not able to do it. The very decisive factor of what Christians can do or cannot do is prayer. Once you understand the scripture correctly, then you need to stay awake and pray. Without having, if you and I are not able to pray, then we don't, we don't, we're missing out on spiritual power. If you and I do not understand the working of the Holy Spirit, how the, how the, the power of God can, can, can work within our lives, you know, we, there's no point of prayer. Because in the eyes of the disciples, when Jesus says, I'm going to die, they simply ignore Jesus. They simply ignore whatever the thing that Jesus was talking about. When Jesus, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, they didn't care. Why? Because their concern was at other places, on, on, on other things. It wasn't about Jesus. It wasn't about what Jesus had said. It wasn't about what Jesus had done. The moment they recognized Jesus as the political Messiah, their whole perspective changed. So when Jesus says, I, I must suffer and then die and, and, and rose from the dead, they simply could not understand. You know, Incorrect understanding of who Jesus Christ was imprinted within their hearts. From that moment on, understanding correctly of Jesus was impossible. They simply could not understand Jesus. They simply could not. So knowing the imminent, the imminent future, that the betrayer will come, that he will be captured. And he, from that moment on, it's gone. He knew that his disciples had to run away from him. You know? But this was the last chance for Jesus. Please, stay awake and listen. Stay awake and pray and listen to what I'm praying. So Jesus probably, you know, prayed aloud. He said, Lord, you know, I know you're almighty God. Is there any way that you can pass this cup, pass me by? But not according to what I want, but according to what, you're, what, what you want. And it comes back. Everybody was sleeping. <laughs> and it wakes them up, especially Peter, because he knew that Peter is going to disown him three times. Very soon, that night, and Jesus and Peter understood what Jesus was saying, but he didn't understand it, really. He didn't really understand it. He comes back again. Still, they're falling asleep. Yeah, I'm sure Jesus said it again. 
Why, why can't you stay awake? Peter! And they, they had nothing to say. Why? Because they just simply couldn't stay awake. He goes away and praying, comes back. He finds them then sleeping again. He says, this is it. <laughs> this is it, guys. Now you can rest. You know, I'm not going to bother you anymore. Why? Because he can't. He'll be captured. You know? I told you during the first service, when Jesus told them to get rest and sleep, they're all wide awake. You know? What's going on here? You know? They simply could not, do, could not do according to what Jesus was telling them to do. You know, do you, do, you, do you understand why you need to pray? Do you understand why you need to succeed in worship? Because there's so many things that are taking place within our lives. You know, in order for you and I to become successful in all the things that we do, we need to receive His guidance, guidance of the Holy Spirit. But so many people are not able to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit because they don't know what is the Holy Spirit's guidance. People do not understand to where the Spirit is leading them. So many people do not understand what it is that He wants. So many people are struggling. To, so should I make a left turn here or a right turn here? I mean, that's, I guess that's the most common uh, question that I, that I was being asked. So many people come to me and say, Pastor, should I do this or should I not do this? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's better that people come to me and even ask that question. But the fact that you're asking me that question means you're not really holding on to the word. You're not really understanding what it is that God, God is trying to tell you. you know? But I tell them, are you, are you gonna, are you, if I tell you what to do, are you going to do it? Some people smile. <laughs> and some people say, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Some people lie. <laughs> you know? And the majority of them, I tell them to do it, and they don't. They don't. Why? Because they have their own plan. You know, uh, they wanted to uh, make sure that I that I acknowledge their plans. They wanted me to bless them on their plans. You know. You know. To, so the question that you and I need to ask is this: Am I? Do I know what prayer is? Do you know what prayer is? How do you pray? If God is the Almighty God, you know, He's the omnipotent, He's, he's omniscient, he, He's all powerful and He's all knowing. Why, why are we asking Him? You know, Lord, should I do this? Why are we not asking Him? We've been hearing about who Jesus is, but we never really, we never really got to understand who He was. We never really got to experience who He was. On the contrary, we study. You know, we solve math problems. You know, we, we study history. We memorize it. We learn from it. And we learn that those are some, we, we, we learn the worldly truth. And we hold on to it. And whatever happens, you know, we use the worldly truth that we have learned and we exercise it. What about the, the scripture? What about the truth that the Bible is talking about? What about Jesus himself calling Jesus himself calling that I am the truth? How much of that do we believe? Do we believe in it or are we simply memorize a scripture verse? You know. I think oftentimes we memorize a scripture reference and we say, "Hey, yeah, this is it." You know, Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me." And of course, at the end of that first, you and I were supposed to say, amen. Right? That's, that's how we learn. But are we able to apply that? It's Jesus Christ, the truth. Why was Jesus so concerned about letting this truth to, to, to be revealed unto the, unto the disciples? You know, why did Jesus, for three times, comes back and says, Guys, stay awake. Stay awake. Why? Like I said, because he knew the imminent future. And that's today's um, passage that we read. And if you look at verse 43, just as he was 
speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared with him, uh, and appeared and with him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Why? Because he sold him off. Judas Iscariot, he sold him off. So he brought people to capture him. And if you look at verse 42, it says, Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And there comes Judas Iscariot. And he comes and betrays him. Jesus knew the imminent future. Jesus knew what was going to happen. So Jesus was warning them. And if by any chance you and I receive God's grace today on Sundays, and as you listen to the word, you know what it means? Jesus is preparing you for the imminent future. Jesus knew that you, you by yourself are not able to overcome the problems that you're going to face. Jesus says, here, here's my grace. Here's the strength that I give you. Receive it. Be filled by the Holy Spirit and overcome the problems that you are going to face soon. But here, the disciples, they were not able to receive the strength that Jesus Christ gives. They were not able to pray, you know. Had they pray, seriously, had they pray, and I'm sure they would have understood what Jesus meant. When Jesus prayed unto the Lord, had they prayed, the disciples would have definitely understood what those meant. So the Judas is here, he betrayed. Verse 44, now the betrayer had arranged the signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him, and, and, and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The moment the Judas kissed Jesus, uh, these people, they came to Jesus and grabbed him. They arrested him. And this is, look, look, this is what happened. And verse 46, the man sees Jesus and arrested him. And then one of the standing, one of those standing near near drew his sword and struck the servant, servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Now this is the Peter. Peter was carrying the sword. He saw that someone was trying to grab onto Jesus. He drew his sword and cut off his ear. I don't know if it was aimed for the ear or it was aiming for his neck. <laughs> you know, somehow he cut off his ear. Now think about this. If this is really what had happened, and the people also, they, they would capture Peter and drag, drag along with Jesus Christ. So knowing that, if you look at other versions, you know, Jesus quickly grabbed the, the ear that is falling off from the servant and put it right back. You know, so, psh, nothing happened. So, so, so don't, 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 Peter didn't do anything, you know. I mean, it happened so quickly, you know. He sees Peter drawing his sword, you know, in a slow motion. Whoosh. Jesus immediately thinking, no, this is not happening, you know. He sees the ear falling off, falling off, and he quickly grabs it and puts it right back in. Comes back to his, his places. Nothing happened. Why? Because if Peter had... If Peter was captured at that place, at that moment, he would, have, he would have died. He would have died with Christ. So Jesus didn't want that to happen. Right? And it, this is very important. When Jesus says, he, he came back third time and he saw the disciples falling asleep. And Jesus says, this is it. You know, now you guys can rest. You know, this is fine. You don't have to. Say, you don't have to stay awake and pray. Now you got to run. <laughs> and that's what Jesus, Jesus that's, that's exactly what Jesus meant. But the Peter, he stood by Jesus and exercising his sword. You know, and incident took place. Now, if you and I do not understand, if we do not understand the scripture, we do not understand um, the word, the reason why we come to church on Sunday is to worship him, to hear what it is that God is telling us, you know. And if we do not hear what, it, what Jesus is, what God is telling us, we're in big trouble. Why? Because we'll be acting like Peter. 
Jesus is telling us to stay awake and pray. We'll be falling asleep. And Jesus says, this is it now, you know, rest. Don't do anything. <laughs> and then we'll be like drawing swords and try to cut off someone, someone's ear. You know? So understanding the word is very important. Understanding what it is that the Lord is trying to tell us is important. Now, after he quickly fixed this cut off ear, <laughs> um, what did Jesus do? You know, verse 48. He says, am I leading a rebellion, said, said Jesus. Now, look at this. He puts the ear back to the servant, and he quickly turns to the, the crowd. You know? And he says, am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me. Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. Meaning, you saw me every single day, but you didn't capture me. Do you know why? Do you know why? Jesus says. What did he say? But the scriptures must be fulfilled. You didn't do it because. Because of, because of scripture. Because it wasn't time for him. You know? Because it wasn't time for him to be captured. And now it is time. The scriptures must be fulfilled. Not only was Jesus talking to the crowd, but at the same time he was talking to Peter. You know, Peter. I'm doing, all these things are happening because we need to, because scripture need, must be fulfilled. Of course, Peter did not understand it. You know. These things happen. Whatever, is, whatever had happened, had to happen. Whatever is happening in your life, has to happen. Based on your spiritual state, things will happen. So let us understand his word. If you and I understand if we, if we understand the word correctly, the, we will we'll understand the imminent future. We'll understand what to do and what not to do. We'll understand when to pray, when not to pray. I mean, there, there, is such, there isn't such a thing called when not to pray. We should always pray. But we, we will know what to do and what not to do. That for that reason, understanding the word is, is very important. So the bottom line, the bottom line is, Having under, now, as far as trying to understand the today's passage, the bottom line is this. Do you understand the Bible? Do you know and do you understand the Bible? If that's the bottom line of it, then what is, what is the Bible trying to tell us? What is the Lord trying to tell us? If you and I understand scripture correctly, then we'll understand the whole present situations. We'll understand the hardships that we're going through. We'll understand why things are taking place within our lives. Because we know, just like Joseph, we'll not complain. We'll not be discouraged. You know, His brothers tried to kill him. He was sold off as a slave. He was sold as a slave. He was imprisoned. You know, by false accusations. Joseph never complained. He was never discouraged. Why? Because he knew. He knew God's word. Not only did he know God, but he understood the promise that God had given to him. Today is the day that we come to church to hear about the promise of God. You know, what, is it that, what is it that God is to promising us? That's what we're holding on to. If we understand scripture correctly, then we'll understand the present situation correctly. Then what? Then we'll stay awake. Wow, it's time for me to stay awake. It's time for me to pray. And because people are not able to recognize the present reality, what do they do? They go to sleep when they're, when they're supposed to be working. They're working when they're supposed to be sleeping. They, they're not, they don't understand the time schedule. They're constantly making mistakes. They don't know what to do. So whatever the thing they f it, it fits in their eyes, they do it. Oh, it's, it sounds good to me, so let's do it. No. Am I supposed to be doing that? Or am I not supposed to be doing that? How is the world leading me? Now, understanding my question of do you understand this Bible, it's, it's in a way a very, very broad question. You know, how, how can anyone understand the whole scripture? Think about it. You know. 
But if you understand this, if you understand the core, the, 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 the core of the scripture, then it comes very easy. The whole Bible is talking about Christ. So the Bible is talking about that Jesus is the Christ. The Bible talks about the Christ is coming. Why? Because of the Genesis chapter 3 problems. Because of the original sin. Because we are separated from God. Because we have fallen into the state of sin. Because we all have become children and children of the devil. We needed the Savior. So God promised the Savior who is the Christ. So Christ is going to come. When he comes, he's going to destroy the head of the serpent. He's going to set you free. And through him, you will meet me. And that's the promise. So understanding Jesus being the Christ, that's, that's everything. And the Bible is talking about that. For you and I to understand that Jesus is the Christ means we understand Jesus to be the prophet, priest, and the king. We need to understand what he had done. So the, ministry, the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ is very important. It's imperative that you and I understand correctly. Especially the ministry of Christ is very important. The ministry of Christ can be categorized into three. As a prophet, as a priest, and as the king. And as the prophets, so what did Jesus say in John 14, 6? He says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's what we believe. We believe that he is the truth. He's the life. He's the only way. That's what we need to believe. Once you and I get to believe in this, what do we do? We get to surrender our lives to Him. We, we can entrust our lives unto Him. It's because people do not understand. Because It's because people do not believe in Him. They're not able to trust their life unto Him. Surrendering, it's impossible. How do you, how do you surrender? So many times we think we can solve the problems. Oh, I can do that. I don't, I don't need Jesus. I don't need God. Oh, I'm smart. I'm very skilled. You know, I don't need him. Why do I need him? People do not understand. And it is, the, it, is, it is God himself who had given you the wisdom. It is the God himself who had given you that skill. People do not understand that. I hope, I hope that all of you guys will not become full as, as other people. We need to recognize that everything that we have is God-given. You know? So we need to understand Jesus as the prophet. At the same time, we need to understand Jesus as the priest. You know? Why? Because Jesus Christ is the only means to be free from the sin and curse. So Romans 8.2, it says, The law of the spirit of life sets you free from the law of sin and death. Lawfully, legally. We're set free. Legally. Satan will always come around and say, hey, you're mine. Come follow me. And what you and I can say is, no, I don't have to follow you. That's why uh, James, uh, James says, you know, resist the devil and, and he'll fool you away. People do not resist the devil. Why? Because they don't know. They don't have any uh, legal basis for resisting Jesus. Uh, resisting for the devil. You know, the devil comes around and, and demands, and says, you're mine, come follow me. A lot of Christians are, oh, okay. You, know. you and I need to understand that Christ had died for you. He had set us free from the law of sin and death. And that's what you and I need to believe. That's what it means to believe that Jesus is the Christ. He came as the king. Christ is the only means to come out of the power of Satan. And that's what you and I must know. The Bible is talking about this. The Bible is talking about Jesus being the Christ. Now that you and I understand Jesus is the Christ, what do we need to do? We must make that Jesus as the master of our lives. So the question is, is he the master? Is he the master of your life? Or are you the master of your life? Sometimes he is our master, right? But sometimes he's not. You know, uh, when we come to church and worshiping the Lord, it 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 sounds it looks very much that 
that Jesus is the master of our, our lives. But the moment we leave the church, we ourselves become the master. Or someone else, maybe your parents, you know, maybe your spouses, maybe your best friends, people around you can become the master of your life. Don't let anybody become the master of your life except Jesus. The more, the more you and I get to understand that Jesus is the Christ, now, the easier it, it becomes to have Jesus as, my, as our Lord and Master. Now, think about this. Why, why does it have to be the master of our lives? He is the master of our lives. You know, regardless, whether we acknowledge it or not, and the fact that Jesus is our master doesn't change, you know. But why, why do we have to make Jesus the master of our lives? Because he's the only one who can guide us correctly. You know, as a, as a living Christian, as, as, a, as a Christian living in this world, we need to receive his guidance. Without his guidance, we would not know where to go. You know, we would not understand what to do. And Jesus Christ, who is the master of our lives, continuously works within our lives. You know? So our identity is very important. Jesus Christ, uh, he's with us, indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He continually guides us, indwelling of the Holy, indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You know? He continuously works within our lives, the working of the Holy Spirit. So you've got to understand who you are. That's who you are. If you understand Jesus being the Christ and who you are, then you can receive his guidance correctly. You can experience the amazing, the powerful working of the Holy Spirit every single day. Today, tomorrow, for the rest of your lives, we can experience that. So throughout this week, let's, you know, let's ask this question. Is Jesus my master? Is he the master? Is he the Lord? You know, as you study, as you work at home, in a school, whatever you do as you meet people, or all, when you're all by yourself, let us ask this question. Is Jesus the master of my life? Why? Because, as Jesus himself said, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. It is going to be fulfilled. The word of God is going to be fulfilled. And if you and I have, if you and I have Jesus Christ as the master of our lives, Jesus himself, who is the master of our lives, is going to help us experience the fulfillment of his word. So throughout this week, let us continuously ask this question. You know, is he, is he my master? And at the same time, let us pray, Lord, I want you to be my master. May you continuously break down all the forces of darkness that hinders me from acknowledging that you are my master. Yeah. And throughout this week, let us experience who he is. Things will happen, good things and bad things. Well, sometimes we'll make mistakes. You know, sometimes we'll do well. But in the midst of all things, The fact that Jesus, being the Christ, never changes. So let us not dwell in our past. Let us not dwell in our scars. But let us dwell in his promise that Jesus is the Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for, uh, thank you for the Christ. If it wasn't for him, we'll be still... Um, be listening to what Satan had to say. We'll still be the slaves to sin and curses, Lord. We'll still be wandering around because, because we don't have Jesus. But Lord, by your grace, you send Christ, the Savior, for us by acknowledging and believing in him and ask him to come into our hearts. Lord, we have become your children. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your great love. And we recognize that the scripture is going to be fulfilled no matter what. And help us to, may you pour your spirit upon us 
so that we'll have a wisdom to understand. May we have a great intelligence to not only understand Jesus, but to understand the whole world. May you continue to work with us, Lord, that all the remnants have gathered here today, may truly, as they meditate on your word, that your light will be shone on them, and that all the remnants will truly get to know that you are the Christ in their lives. May they continuously experience that. May they continuously be the witness of Jesus being the Christ. And we thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.